Thumbs up have arrived. Thumbs up have arrived. I like that. <laughs> Twelve of them so far. Welcome to uh, Dylan Talks Tone Q&A session that we do every Thursday. Uh, we're going to talk about keeping your guitar in tune and string changes and all the things that contribute to that. Oh, it was as a result of a... <clears throat> I didn't really have anything to talk about tonight. I didn't have an idea, and then somebody asked a question, and I thought it was really good. So we're going to chat about that. Um, before we get going, please uh, do me a favor and check out patreon.com slash dylantalkstone, uh, dylantalkstone.com, where you can buy pickups from us. That's what we really do. People think I'm like this big YouTuber, but I'm not <laughs> at all. Uh, we make pickups here. So it's pretty cool. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff there. Dylan Talks Tone. Check it out. Uh, also, there's a bunch of links in the description. Sweetwater, Stumac, uh, Runway Audio Cables, uh, and a bunch of stuff. If you use those links, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Helps out the channel a little bit. And uh, that's how you can support. And if you don't want to spend any money at all, uh, you can just like and describe and share well, when they share with other people, they will describe. Did you mean to say that? No. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so that's that's what we'll do. So we talk about guitar stuff on this channel. And this Thursday night thing's kind of fun. We talk about guitar stuff for an hour. Uh, we feature uh, all of the stuff that came in from Patreon. I make a post over there every day. And to from the YouTube uh, join folks down there, the YouTube club. Um, and then we'll get a little off topic after 9 o'clock Eastern Time. That's normally what we do. If you have questions, get them in the chat uh, right over here. Put a bunch of question marks in front of them so we can catch them. And if you use a super chat, we'll drop what we're doing and answer them right away. So that's the little spiel that we give every week before we get started. Does that mean we have begun? We have begun. The party has now started. You seem so jazzed. Are we making music puns now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So we got some people. That's cool. 56 folks hanging out. 32 likes. That means some of you haven't done it yet. Um, well, let's go ahead and get into some of these questions because there's some interesting ones. And then we'll talk about tuning. And if you have questions, like I said, put them in the chat over here. I'm going to pour my drink while you ask me the first one. Zoltan, on topic. What product is safe to use to clean pots that work but are scratchy? Um, what's that stuff called? Uh, Deoxit. I don't know if you have Deoxit where you live. He's in Europe. But we use Deoxit over here, and it's pretty good. Um, it will clean your pots out pretty well. That'd be my favorite. Cool. And then there's off topic. You want to save it for later? Yeah. All right. Come back to you, Zoltan. Jeff, I'm trying to understand technically the difference between fuzz and distortion and between distortion and overdrive. I'm guessing fuzz is an electrical interference in the signal to produce the fuzzy tone. Distortion seems maybe it's just pushing the amp harder to distort the sound. Overdrive seems to also push the amp harder. Do distortion pedals also have some electrical interference in the signal? <clears throat> this is a great question. So um, let's start with overdrive and go to fuzz. We'll leave fuzz for after. So <clears throat> basically what you're doing all an overdrive pedal is, is it is a little... MOSFET or JFET amp. It's a little transistor amp. It boosts the signal coming from the guitar so that it hits the amp harder. Depending on how you have your amp set, it will push your amp past the point that it is capable of being clean into overdrive. So, you know, that's basically what an overdrive pedal does. It doesn't, on purpose, most... 
in the strictest sense of the word, it won't really mess with the tone except for, it won't really mess with the signal except for any tonal changes that you make to it as far as like frequency. So like, you know, if it's got a tone knob on it with more clarity and more highs or you turn it all the way down and it's muddier sounding. Um, inherently though, a lot of overdrive pedals, like the Tube Screamer, for example, have a little mid-range push in them that give them kind of that little honky sound. Uh, and other overdrive pedals do a little different things with the EQ. But as far as the power, it just pushes it up some. Now a distortion pedal does exactly the same thing that an overdrive pedal does. And this is very overly simplistic. There's much more that goes into this. If you listen to like Brian Wampler's podcast, Chasing Tone, he gets all into circuits and all into transistors and what each one of them does and how they're all different and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not really the guy for that. But just think of it simply as uh, a boost and an overdrive kind of push the signal harder into the amp. A distortion pedal is where we start to get into it changes the shape of the wave. So we've heard of, we can we've heard about soft clipping diodes, hard clipping diodes, sawtooth square wave. If you've ever heard of distortion pedals that do that, um, it'll actually change the shape of the sound wave as it goes through, and the transistor is responsible for that. And so there's where you start to get into more drastic. This is the sound that I put in versus this is the sound that I put out. It's more than just louder. You've really changed it now. Um, and a fuzz pedal is basically the same thing. It is a distortion pedal, but typically fuzz pedals run on a different impedance because their transistors are way niched, very specialized. So when they start talking about... Um, all kinds of different crazy and that's where you'll get into like the Russian stuff you'll get into all kinds of crazy transistor uh, selections for fuzzes and I know that there's other stuff with fuzzes but I know that the impedance is different that's why they won't cooperate with WAS a lot of time and sometimes they won't cooperate very well with modeling certain modeling amps depending on how the impedance of it is because everything is different in a fuzz because of the transistors that they use so there you go. Is fuzzes the plural of fuzz? Or why wouldn't it just be fuzz? Or would it be fuzz eye? I don't know. I'm asking. Fuzzes sounds wrong. I feel like fuzz eye is what uh, like Jay-Z would say if he, he was talking about two fuzzes. I don't know much about Jay-Z. And if Snoop said it, it would be fizzle. A shizzle. Okay, next. Rob. Hello, Leslie and Dylan. First, thank you for the kind note and goodies inside. Receiving handwritten mail is so awesome. Dylan, I noticed the P90 mounting holes are blocked. I assumed with wax. Do I want a tight or loose fit between the wax and the machine screws I use to mount pickups to the guitar body? doesn't matter. Just poke the wax out, stick the screw through there, and screw it to the body with some foam underneath. That just happens when we wax pot it. Um, that wax gets in there, and you just push it out. No big deal. That's it. Oh, so our last question was from Jeff, and it was actually Jeffrey Egan because he just said, cool, thanks. But I would have never put the two together. I think because on Patreon, he's Jeff Egan. Oh, I could I be know. wrong about that. I, I was like, I, Jeff, I don't know Jeff. I could be completely wrong about that, and I could have mispronounced his name, and with that, I would apologize, because I don't try not to do that. Oh, it does say Jeff Egan on Patreon. Okay, we'll let you slide then. I didn't know it was him, though. My bad. Shane, <clears throat> good morning, Leslie and Dylan. I'm celebrating my birthday by working overtime today, and thus missing seeing you live. Question... Do you prefer chorus before or after overdrive and distortion? Why? After. Uh, because I like it after. That's my my choice. 
Um, I don't really have a reason. I just like the way it sounds. Um, people will say put your time-based stuff after your signal boosts, which would be your overdrives and distortions and stuff. Personally, I don't live by those rules a lot of times, but in this case I do because just because I like it like that. But I don't put it in a loop. I'm not a loop guy most of the time. Most of the time. Ivan, I won't be joining in tonight. Family stuff. My daughter's dog is not going to make it much longer. Sad day for all. I didn't want <clears throat> I didn't want to put that in there, but he's here every week and he mentioned it on Patreon, so I thought the community might like to know that he's not around. Because yeah. he's always around. So he's just one of the that is tough. folks that's always with us. And when your dog dies, that really sucks. Or when the dog is about to die, that really sucks. Or when you lose your daughter's dog, that really sucks. Because that happened one time. Oh, yeah. We lost. Well, we didn't. Well, he escaped. He escaped. On my watch. So I felt really guilty. But he came back. Yep. Michael K73. Hello, Lou, Leslie, and Dylan. <clears throat> First time caller, long time listener. That makes me feel old. Thanks, Michael. When using a plug in tuner, such as the Peterson Strobo Plus HDC, should the volume and tone knobs on the guitar be set to 10 when tuning? Does switch position matter? Um. So I always put my knobs all on 10 because you just want the signal to be as strong as possible. Um, as far as the pickups go, I play around with this sometimes depending on the guitar. Uh, because when you tune the guitar, you're trying to vib vibrate the string, right? And sometimes... On some guitars, in some pickup positions, you get harmonics and stuff that aren't um, the same as in a different pickup position. When I'm normally tuning the guitar, I don't really care. But when I'm doing a setup where I'm like really setting the intonation really properly, like you know, setting the intonation. Um, it's funny that you mentioned this because I was just doing this today on a Telecaster and I was playing with the tele with the bridge position, the middle position and the neck position to make sure that it was that the intonation acted the same on the tuner in all three positions, just in case there was any weird harmonics that might tell you, give you a, give you an inaccurate picture of what's happening. So I'll, I'll check on multi pickup guitars, especially like strats because they have three. So, and overall, I don't think the answer is that it's technically necessary, but I think it's just a thing that I like to do. I don't think there's really any science behind my method there. I just think I just like to do it to make sure. It might be imagined. I'm just gonna say it might be imagined that you would have to just a habit has become yeah. your practice. Yeah, because I've seen and heard weird harmonics in various guitars before. And when you're setting intonation, like you, you want it to be as accurate as possible. So I've, I've gotten into the habit of checking, but I don't necessarily know that it would really make a huge difference. So don't take it as a rule that you have to do it. <clears throat> cool. That's what got me thinking about tuning. What's tuning? Yeah, because I was working on a, a tele, two tellies today. And... Why are you, like, so thirsty? I am. It's, like, distracting. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I was working on two tellies today. <clears throat> and a lot of times people have hard times with Telecasters because... For a bunch of reasons, but... You know, of course, they blame it on the three saddle bridge and all those kind of various things. And I had a six saddle bridge telly that I was working on and a three saddle bridge telly that I was working on, and they both came out perfect. So I wanted to kind of go over some of the things that 
cause problems when setting up a guitar and making sure that you that the guitar is in tune all the time. And <clears throat> the biggest thing you got to start with is the fundamentals of your guitar setup. So neck relief, which personally I set totally flat, uh, and then make sure that your nut's not too high, and make sure that your saddle height's not too high. The higher your action is, the harder it is going to be to be able to keep a guitar in tune, and the harder it is that you're going to be able to intonate the guitar properly because every time you push on the string, you're pulling it out of pit, pulling it away from ideal pitch. So if your action is really high at the nut or at the saddle or both, because of your playing preference, you're going to have to put up with a little bit of intonation wander because as you push way down on the string, it's just going to pull everything out, basically. Um, and when intonation suffers, your tone can suffer because then you have frequencies that are fighting against each other. Um, you know, people will say, like, they'll strum a guitar, like, a, they'll pick up a guitar that's perfectly set up and then... They get that, whoa, that's totally resonant, bro. And the reason is, is because the guitar is 100% in tune, the nut is proper, the saddle is proper, everything is proper, and you don't have any frequencies fighting against each other, you don't have any extraneous um, vibrations, you know, rattles, anything like that, and the guitar like feels totally resonant, bro, because it's doing what you want it to do for as long as you want it to do it. and. I don't think people think about a lot of times being out of tune as being a tone killer. I know it sucks because it sounds bad, but if you're not intonated properly and you're not perfectly in tune, you won't have that totally resonant bro feeling. Like it will, because there will be th things fighting against each other. Um, <clears throat> which is, I don't, I don't know that a lot of people think about the actually staying in tune and being in tune as part of how good your guitar is. Um, besides, it's annoying when it goes out of tune. But actually how good your guitar sounds and functions when your guitar is perfectly in tune. So some people are talking about... Um, Rob F. says, Interesting, I never thought about the volume setting when tuning. I use my thumb rather than pick, though. Mm. Um, Marsha Murray says, I've heard tune using the neck with tone knob all the way down because of harmonics. Not sure, though. Uh, A lot of times that causes more. Mm. Jeffrey Egan says, I use my thumb, too. Sometimes a pick. Not sure it makes a difference. Shenanigan says, just last night I was trying to tune my guitar but had the volume all the way off and the tuner wasn't picking it anything at all. As soon as I raised the volume, everything was fine. <clears throat> Man, I have done that so many times, like putting pickups in a guitar, and I'm like, what is wrong with this thing? I know I wired it right. <laughs> I realized either the jack's not plugged all the way in or the, the volume's not up on <laughs> the guitar. Rob F. says, I forget where, but at some point I remember hearing that it was better to tune using one's thumb. Gary Simmons hmm. says, heck, just pushing too hard when fretting using tall-ish frets will pull it all sharp. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's what. That's why I like to... So let's talk about a couple of things there. So a lot of people will do the 12th fret harmonic. I like to press down on the 12th fret. The reason I like to press down on the 12th fret is because that's how you play. So... If you push down on the strings, uh, you're stretching the string away from ideal pitch, from resting pitch, because, you know, the guitar will never be in tune in all the frets. It's just the nature of how the guitar works. So if you fret the E string in the first fret, you could, it has to be a little bit out of tune for the 12th, 17th, and the 20th fret to be in perfect tune. It's never going to be perfect all the way across all the frets. Is it going to be... Now, theoretically perfect. Is it going to be perfect enough so that your ear cannot hear the difference? Yes, you can get it that close. But in theoretical perfection, it will never be because that's just how a guitar works. But 
a major portion of that is how far you pull the string down to the fretboard. So I always use the push the string to the fretboard method because that's how you play. You don't play with open, you play with open strings, but open strings are easy. Pulling down to the fretboard is a more variable because it's also how you play based on how you play. Like you said, the, the fret size, string tension, string gauge, all that kind of stuff comes into play. So that's how I do it, to get it more accurately to how we actually play, not theoretical. To me, I guess that's the easiest way to say it. Checking with a harmonic is a theoretical, like, it's like a academic, almost, way to check it, where pressing down on the fret is a practical, like, real way, because that's how we really play. That's the way, that's the reason I do it how you really play. Yeah. What is everybody else saying still? What else they got going on? I already there? read everything that they were saying about friends. You That's want it. questions? Yeah, let's do some questions. And I'm sure we'll wrap back around I mean, to this. I tuning, not just friends. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Chuck C says, hello from Buffalo. I got my Dylan swag and thank you this past Tuesday. Thanks, I love it. Now I gotta get around to putting in the Firebird pickups in the olive green Firebird. Ooh, that's right. He got an olive green Firebird. Sweet. Yeah, so that's the second time that's come up. So if you missed all of that, um, we were not including swag with pick guards. Yeah, for a period of time. Yeah. So we, we made it up to everybody and mailed out little notes and. Hopefully. I'm not saying that we won't randomly send people stuff from time to time, because that was kind of fun. Says the person who didn't write 30 notes. That's true. Just saying. <laughs> was it 30? 20? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was, it was I never write. It was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm just like, give me your email. I'll just shoot you a quick message. Nah, that was pretty cool. That was fun. That was cool. I had to sign my name a bunch of times. <laughs> Leslie actually did most of all of that, so we should make sure she gets the credit for that. I'm sure they know. Yeah. Because so it's, it's girl handwriting. My... Yeah. And it's not my handwriting. Name. Right. What else anyway. we got going in there? Daniel Ring Rencon. I wanted to say recon. I don't know why. Daniel Rinkin? I don't know. Sorry, Daniel. How do you ground a neck pickup cover on a Nashville style telly with three pickups? Swap the cables because of phase issues and now have grounding issues. Yeah. So you have to put a third wire on it. Well, either that or you have to disconnect it from. So typically a, um, Typically, a neck Telecaster pickup has a wire that goes from the cover to the ground stud on where the wire goes into the pickup. And so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to connect that to the other wire instead. You'll have to connect it to the positive instead of to the negative if you switch the wires. What I do in those situations is I disconnect it from the ground that it came with and I run a separate wire and just ground the cover individually. That way it doesn't matter what you do with your wires. So hey, you'll have a three wire. So it'll be negative, positive, and your cover will have its own wire. And ground that. Shenanigans says, can you tell me where I can buy good pots, switches, caps, and wiring diagrams? I'm going crazy trying to find decent parts. Um, Mojotone has good stuff. Um, CE Distribution out of Texas has good stuff. Or maybe out of Arizona. Um, it just depends how many you buy that's the problem most stuff you can get on amazon like cts pots and borns pots you can get those on amazon um you might have to you know buy like a five pack or something but you can get that stuff there that's what i would do if you're only building a couple of guitars you know if you're 
you know, like WD Music, for example, or All Parts or CE Distribution, I, you know, I, I buy my stuff from and Mojo Tone, but I, you know, I buy a lot. We buy like a lot of parts. So, you know, it's, we have a different deal. So from on the consumer side, you can just get the stuff from Amazon. Worry about the brand more than worry about where you get it. So as, as long as you're getting CTS or Borns, um, you can wear that stuff. It's not expensive. Doug Santaniello says, if I add a volume only pot on the Johnny Switch Black single pickup telly, do I use a capacitor? Also, what really do the capacitors do? So if you want volume only, then you will not use a capacitor. What you'll do is you'll take the wire from the pickup, the hot wire from the pickup, and you will uh, can you see if there's a sharpie in that top skinny the bottom box top skinny drawer bottom box, bottom box top. top one up from that that's not the bottom no nope. top skinny drawer what go are down, you down, about? down down bottom box top what? skinny drawer that's what and you said no. Oh, there's... I'm sorry. I thought you... I had a huge Sharpie. That's fine. We're going whiteboard live, yo. That's not a whiteboard. That's paper. Yeah, so somebody's going to get this in their pickups tomorrow, probably. Because this is... Yeah, this is the... This is the pickups... This is the pickup packing paper. Oh. Peter Piper, you know. All right, so volume pot. This we is got scary. A volume pot that goes like this, right? And we've got a lug here, and a lug here, and a lug here, and this is how the milk comes out of the cow. <laughs> it's probably too bright. Here, let's, I'm gonna, you're gonna darken this down just for a minute, and then we'll lighten it back up. So this is how the milk comes out of the cow. The tail is over here. Okay, so here's the volume pot. So what you're going to do is you're going to bend this one to the case and you're going to ground it. The middle one is going to go to the output jack, okay? And this side is going to have the, your pickup wire on it. So your pickup wire from your pickup is going to come here. This one's going to get grounded. Uh, and then take your output jack ground and go here too. So bend this one and solder it to the back of the pot. Your output jack ground goes here. Your output jack hot goes here. And then your pickup goes right there. And I will hold this up so you can have the... This is how a cow works and this is how a volume cow pot works. Cow udder pickup wiring. Yeah, cow udder pickup wiring. So... There you go. And that's how you wire a volume pot when you just have one and you do not need uh, you do not need a capacitor. There you go. Hoss says eat your heart out, Bob Ross. <laughs> hey man. You got happy little pot teats. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Too much. Oh, man. All right. Oh. This is what I was scrolling back for here. So, it tells me that this is the first Super Chat from Rusty Shackleford. So, thank you for thank the you, Super Rusty. Chat. Thank you, Rusty. This is Dylan. Thanks so much for the loaded pick guard. <clears throat> I had a lot of special asks, and you made exactly what I wanted. I'm sorry for all the extra work. You didn't charge enough. People, buy Dylan's pickups. Thanks, man. Yeah, we did something for you that I'll never do again. <laughs> but it was really cool. It was. Uh, it took longer than necessary. Uh, because I that I think I talked about that last week. Like, I had to, like, walk away from it and come back to it. Like, 
And then me and him still had to, we, when he got it in his guitar, I was like, wait a minute, okay, now that it's in the guitar, like making sure that it was right. And we had to have a couple of messages back and forth because he wanted something really complicated. So, no, but that's cool. I, I, I appreciate that very much. I love building loaded pick cards. Thanks, Doug. Antoniella. Thank you for the super chat. He said, it's that Texas Toast Johnny Switchblade. Easy peasy. Thanks. You are very welcome. And you'll be able to rewind and pause and whatever or screenshot. And you can just get that get that out of there. <clears throat> Maybe we should keep some paper and a Sharpie around. Super chat from Doc Siltonen. Thank you for the super chat, Doc. He says, y'all have some messed up cows. <laughs> they usually have four teats in Canada. <laughs> oh. That must be metric cows. Uh, we, we do live near a lot of nuclear power plants. We do. We do. That's some kilo cows up there. Oh. Cool. All right. You ready? Yep. Uh, Sean McCartney says it's like deer. Plural is just fuzz. Oh, okay. Do you put more Z's on it? Like fuzz? Okay, so there's another comment. I didn't grab it, so I don't know who said it, but it was literally plural of fuzz is like fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember who said it. Sorry. That's awesome. <laughs> um, that's funny. Haas, what is the allure <clears throat> of jumbo frets? I am very novice, and I have never understood. So this is an interesting one. Um, we might have to get out the paper again. So... Or unless I can just grab a guitar. So jumbo frets are interesting because they keep the string further off the fretboard because they're taller, right? And they're also wider. So you have some frets that are like narrow and skinny and tall. And you have some frets that are kind of like round. Jumbo frets are kind of just like a round half moon sort of thing, but they're also taller. You have medium jumbo, you have jumbo, you have extra jumbo. Um, there's narrow tall. There's the teeny weeny ones like that come on like a Fender or a Gibson Jr. Um, in the old days, a junior would come with really small frets because it was felt that it would be easier for someone to learn and it would be easier for them to... Um, press down because it's smaller fret. <clears throat> um, taller frets it depends on how hard you play I guess. That's the biggest thing is how hard you press down. Um, people that press down really hard I think they don't like small frets as much because you really shouldn't touch the fretboard with your strings. Like the not I'm saying you shouldn't, but most of the time when you play, you your strings don't ever actually touch the fretboard. So do you like to feel the fretboard under your fingers? Get smaller frets. Do you like to just feel the strings under your fingers? Get bigger frets. But here is a couple of things to think about with that. If you let's pretend that you have the same. I should do a video on this so I can actually draw this properly. Let's say you have a modern C profile neck on a Strat or a Tele. So uh, my green, or that's a vintage, but anyways, so let's take that green Tele up there. <clears throat> a seven and a quarter radius is gonna be like this. A 12 inch radius is gonna be a lot flatter. If the radius of the back of the neck is exactly the same on both guitars, the flatter radius is actually gonna feel bigger in your hands because the edges are gonna be higher. You understand what I'm saying? So seven and a quarter is going to be a lot more like this. 12 is going to be a lot more like this. If the back of the neck is the same, then basically the neck's going to feel bigger because the fretboard radius is, is flatter. So the shoulders are going to be more squared off. A lot of people don't think about is if you put a flat radius on a big neck and then you put big frets on it, the effective thickness of the neck gets thicker. Because when you put this, when you push the string down to the fret, if the fret's taller, the whole neck is effectively thicker. So if you push the string down on the top of the fret and then measure it to the back of the neck, 
a bigger fret is going to be a bigger distance. Then a flatter radius is also going to make it a bigger distance on the edges and feel more squared off. So just remember that your fret size is going to factor into the effective thickness of the neck because you have to reach around all of that to play. Huge frets, flat radius, thick neck, it's a lot to reach around. <clears throat> Just weird little things people don't think about. Super chat from Sean McMillan. Thank you for the super chat, Sean. He says, John 5, Ghost Signature Telly. Thoughts? I, it's a bummer that I do not own one. I want one. Yeah. I think it's amazing. Big John 5. Big John fan. 5 fan. <clears throat> Trazinator, thank you for the super chat. He says, just because. Thank you, Trazinator. I think we just sent him something recently, too. Well, it wasn't by that name, so I know his name. <clears throat> super chat from Tony Leonardi. Thank you for the super chat, Tony. He says, good evening, Leslie. Glad I made it tonight. Just saying hey. Not to you, just to me. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> We were actually just talking about a guitar project for him last night. <clears throat> yep. Uh, tomorrow, we might have two videos tomorrow. Because we're going to have the white telly video. And we're going to have a guitar unboxing, live unboxing. Because mm -hmm. we have a new guitar coming tomorrow. This is provided, you know, FedEx shows up like it's supposed to. But <clears throat> Yeah, we'll have a new guitar to unbox tomorrow. It's exciting. Um, all right. Tim Ziegler says, how many of us still tune by ear? Me. Uh, in the living room. I don't tune by ear for videos, but when I'm playing on the couch, I tune by ear. And if I, um, if I feel like I need to retune totally... Uh, I'll just use my phone. I think I use uh, guitar tuna, yeah, on my phone, and I'll just tune for playing in the living room. But um, contrary to popular belief, because everybody thinks I'm out of tune all the time in my videos, I use my Peterson Strobe Tuner before every take in every video to make sure that we're in tune as possible. <clears throat> So if you want bad ears or YouTube changes it or... I don't know. know. I don't know. The only... The only time I don't use my, um, like tomorrow we're going to do a live unboxing and I'm going to be playing through my pedal board into the computer. And that's just kind of like an on the fly thing. So I'll just use my um, pedal tuner uh, down here to just tune the guitar up really quick because that's just a, you know, the guitar's not even set up or anything. So we don't really care. We just want it as close as possible. Marsha Murray says, I tune by ear if I have to get up to get the tuner. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes, most of the time, I think, my close is leaned against the couch in there. And I think most of the time I have a clip-on tuner clipped to the peg head. So I'll play whatever else guitar I have in there, and I'll grab that one off of there, and I'll use it, and then I'll put it back on. But I don't, I don't know. I play acoustic so much in the living room that I don't have to tune that much, because my guitars are all carbon fiber, and they never go out of tune, so... Yeah, why do you have a tuner on the close then? Because that guitar needs to be tuned more than any of the other ones. Really? Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why? Does it have a wood fret? Wood no, neck? no. It has. It's all carbon fiber, but it's that bolt on. You know, because it can come off and fold up and stuff. Oh, that's right. That guitar moves around more. That's the closest <laughs> to <laughs> a conventionally constructed guitar. You know what I mean, like. The McPhersons are both very so not made like regular guitars that they're like in their own league where the close guitar is, it's like a bolt-on, like a Telecaster. Mm. And so it has, I'm not saying it moves around a lot because it doesn't go out of tune a lot, but if there's any guitar in the living room, any of the carbon fiber ones that's going to need to be tuned first, it'll be that one. It, it's not bad. 
I would not, it, w I w it would not discourage anyone from buying it, uh, but just more so, which makes sense for the scale of money that it costs and all that, you know. <clears throat> Timothy Potter says, I just realized that I got a sweet note and swag from Leslie. Are you jealous, Dylan? <laughs> yep. You're jealous? No. <laughs> you want a note? Curtis Chavez, I've been lurking on your website, listening to the different telly style pickups, but I'm still having trouble deciding if I like the flat sixes or the T90s better. What's the difference in the room? Flat sixes are going to be very traditional mid 60s Telecaster. <clears throat> the T90s are just plain gnarly. Um, for anybody else that has those T90s in the comments, put your thoughts about what you think they are. Um, if you want really good Telecaster pickups, get the flat sixes. I love them. They, I love them. Love them. I might put them in my new Fender. Super chat from Tony Leonardi. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Tony. He said, oh, hey, Dylan. Thanks, Tony. <clears throat> no, that's awesome. He was DMing me last night, so. <laughs> Am I supposed to be jealous? <laughs> <laughs> super chat from Keith H. Thank you for the super chat, Keith. He says, I'm first time Floyd user. It works so good. I'm afraid to change strings. Any good tips? Um, do one at a time if you want to. We have a couple of really good Floyd setup videos. You can set up a Floyd in 10 minutes. It's not hard. I actually do it very similar to the same way that I do a Strat. Um, what you can do is if you have a set of feeler gauges, you know, like a, st you know, they come in the stack with the little thing, um, figure out how thick it is to stay in there without uh, falling out. Uh, only maybe a little thicker because when you take a string off, it'll relax a little bit and then just shove it in there and then you'll, um, you know, in the back, and when you take a string off, then it won't like be springing all over the place on you. It'll act like sort of a block. Or once you figure out how that, what that thickness is, just make yourself up a little block out of something and just shove it in there like a stop while you change your strings and it won't be moving around all over on you. Um, and then of course, once you get the strings all back on and you get it tuned back up to pitch, just pull that block out and then just adjust your tuning. You have to do the hand motions yeah, when you do, do it. Do the hand motions. It helps, apparently. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Keith. Uh, Patrick Jean LeBlanc Hardy says, Leslie, you have, I'm going to say, beautiful handwriting. I had a feeling it was your penmanship. Yep. It was yours. <clears throat> it, it was different in everybody's note because. I like forgot how to write. Like I, I was like, <laughs> oh, so my funny. hand hurts. Like, and then I would like write normally, and then I'd write in print, and then I was like, oh, my hand hurts. I'll help you with it next time. Oh, I wasn't. I'm just saying, like, I never write. Literally, never write. I write because I write my name with an etcher. I could probably write with an etcher better than I can write with a pen now. Well, you sucked writing on an iPad. Yeah, that was weird. She asked me to write my name on a iPad last night and with a pen, like, you know, we have the iPad pen and I was trying to make it look sort of like what I, my signature looks like on all this stuff and I couldn't do it. <laughs> it so funny. Tony Leonardi says the card was a great touch. Thank you. Yeah. I like cards. Um, so, and I used to, I used to write a lot of cards though. Mm-hmm. But I just haven't done it in a long time. Jeffrey Egan said he heard thunder and he has a nasty storm cell headed his way. Oh, dang. That is wild. Um, Thumbs down Frank just showed up. What the heck? What the heck? 
He must not like notes. Marsha Murray said Dylan's a lefty, so it would have been smeared if he wrote it. Actually, I'm pretty good about not smearing. Um, I've been writing with my left hand for a long time. Pretty good at it. Ed Dupree said, I do something similar for my strat with a floating trim. A new pack of rolling papers works great. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Um, Derek Sittler. Hey, This Derek. is a new one. Yeah. Hey there, D and Mama Tone. <laughs> Hope you're all doing fine in the current shit shape world. Question of versatility with a Princeton chorus and a big muff clean boost on a 335 clone. Can you get anything you want? I mean, I don't know what that exactly means, but I don't know why you wouldn't. Except clean. But a Princeton chorus with none of that turned on would be... Maybe this question was first. Derek St Sittler. Best Dylans for my 335 clone for versatility. Oh. DAFs. And then he, I guess he has a Princeton, etc. DAFs. For what you're doing? Okay, now it makes sense. DAFs. Sorry, Derek. DAFs, for sure. When you for split sure. your comment, it makes it hard for me because they just go in whatever order they want. Or if you... Okay, here's another thing, though. Fuzzes work really good with single coils. So, if you wanted to put coil splits on that guitar and put center punches in it, and then coil split and use fuzz, that would be cool. So, if you want to coil split, get center punches. If you're not going to coil split, get DAFs. That would be my recommendation. I don't know how, everybody's talking about Taco Bell and Burrito Supremes now, and I don't know how it happened, but now I want... A burrito. I could go for a seven layer. I don't remember what it is. It's been a long time. Seven layer with no cheese and no sour cream. So I guess it would be more like five. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis Chavez, in the early days of electric <clears throat> guitar, few players did bends. Jazz, swing, and ragtime was more about rhythm guitar. Mm -hmm. Once lead guitar became more of a thing, big frets helped reduce drag. Okay, that would make sense. I would get that. Yeah, and actually, that's why the Telecaster came with um, that goofy bass circuit, because there was no P bass back then. You know, they played bass with a Tele, so, yeah. Rob F., <clears throat> wow, I never thought about the radius affecting how much of the neck mm -hmm. my short fingers can reach. Yep. Because the shoulders get square. Curtis Chavez, Robo Tuner. Curtis Chavez, Robo Tuners were a fairly popular product before they became Gibson OEM. Mm -hmm. Why were they so unpopular with Gibson players? Because Gibson didn't give anybody any options. That was a such a blunder by Gibson. The way it was, it was basically forced on everyone more or less. Um, no, those tuners are very good, and they work very well. Uh, they're a nichier product, but they work really good. I, I have a friend who uses them religiously, and he plays a bunch of alternate tunings, and he can tune live on the fly, and he, he loves them. And I know a few people that do. But I think it was just marketed incorrectly and it was made to be such a, you have to have this and we're not giving you any option. And they put not only that, but that stupid brass nut that wore out in like six months and a couple of other things on those guitars. Um, and here's the other thing too. I think people make a huge deal out of robo tuners, but that was only one year. That was 2015. It was only one year they did that. So it's not like this huge problem it was just one year uh but there was a lot of guitars that year so i guess that's why they're out there haas says no sour cream unsubbed <laughs> fine that's funny um guitar science says i can't play guitars with small frets my bends slip and i rage quit okay <clears throat> um Trazenator says, I have your DAF on my desk waiting to get put into my Yamaha Pacifica, which is my first electric guitar. 
I'll mention you in my Instagram stories when it's done. Excellent. I love that when people do that. Mostly, uh, it isn't really about like, ooh, make sure you share it on Instagram so we get, you know, it's more about because I want to see it. It's cool to see. Yeah. So, you know, 90% of the time, literally 90% of the time, we put stuff in these little white boxes and they disappear and I don't ever know what happens after that. So it's kind of cool when people share pictures and tag me in and stuff. I like that. Patrick Hardy says, by the way, I used to collect guitar picks at concerts and etc. Yours rock too. Thank you both again. Still have a smile on my face. So, Thanks. Also, if you missed all of that, all of you that got that, you can thank Patrick Hardy because he's the one that called us out on it. Yeah. And um, we started putting picks in all the orders. So, and they're good. They're not, they're not lame like afterthought like swaggy picks they're like really good they're uh what are they called the um they're the altex not altex um anyway they're in their 70 they're what i play they're like the ones that i use so yeah you'll like them they're the green whatever green tortex and they have our name on them 77, 80, somewhere in there, something like that. I'm all caught up, and we have nine minutes left. Okay. So. I could throw a couple of more tuner things out there. Uh, <clears throat> if you have locking tuners, um, don't wrap them around the peg head at all, around the tuning posts. Just pull it through. Lock it, and then tune the guitar. No extra wraps. If you don't have locking tuners, make sure that you only put, like, three wraps on, and don't tie a stupid knot. Uh, if you put the string coiled underneath and it locks against the top of the hole, tuner hole, that'll be enough. Uh, three wraps around, don't tie a stupid knot, and uh, the guitar will be fine. It won't slip. People are way over paranoid about that stuff. Um, but just don't put too much string on your tuner tuner post. That would be another thing that I would say. Ha said he resubbed. He couldn't quit. Good. I'm still not going to eat sour cream. Or any dairy product. Really. Um... Jason Albert said, I got my junior with your P90 done Saturday. It totally blew me away. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to be playing my junior a bunch this weekend. <clears throat> I actually, for my Silton and junior, I ordered some stuff. Because I want to play that guitar more. So that guitar, it's it's in it's right over here. And I, I haven't played it a bunch. But I'm going to punk rock it up some. And we're going to. We're going to start using it some more. Punk rock it up. Yep. Let's see. Um, Rusty says favorite locking tuners, and he wants to hear from everybody. But do you have favorite locking tuners? Um, yeah. Um, the hip shot stuff is killer. I've Texas Toes turned me on to hip shot stuff. They're super killer. I like Spurzels too. But that's mostly because I've been friends with Ron for 10 years, and I really like him. Um, and their stuff is really good. Spurzels are really cool. Uh, but the ratio is not quite as high, so I like hip shots. We use a set. Uh, when we do, like, vintage update stuff, we put locking tuners on vintage-style fenders. Klusen makes one that looks like a safety post, but it actually has a locking pin on the top. Um, so it is a Klusen double line tuner, so it looks totally vintage, but it locks. And those are my favorite <clears throat> because I actually like stock fender stamp steel tuners. Safety post tuners are my favorite tuner. I know a lot of people don't like them. They think they're hard or dumb or not reliable, but they're my favorite. Regular vintage style safety post tuner with no locks. That's my favorite. Um, 
Doug Santanello says the problem he has is he finds that the locking tuners snap the unwound strings if I don't do two wraps. So you're over tightening. That's the problem. Canadian Combat Wombat the Third nice. says, with intonation, should you be picky or just accept it's not going to be perfect? Get it as close as you can. However, the mistake people make is they do it out of order. Make sure that your fretboard relief, your neck relief, your nut height, and your string height are all where you want them to be before, and your string gauge, all of those things are where you want them to be before you check your intonation. You do that last. Um, and if you do it last, you can get it right. If you start seeing like, oh, I'm out, you'll hear people say like, I ran out of screw on the whatever string and like I don't have enough screw. You have a problem with your guitar if that's the case. Because we are only talking, intonation is a mathematical thing. Basically what it is, is the string gauge on the high E, or the, the, str the scale length on the high E is 25 and a half on a Fender, right? And then the B string is the distance of half of the difference between those two strings. So if we go from nine thousandths to thirteen thousandths, oh, I apologize, ten thousandths to thirteen thousandths, then that means that our B string saddle should only be a thousandth and a half ish or two thousandths back from the E string. The G string should only be 13 to say, like three thousandths back from the B string. And then it resets once you go to the wound ones and then it goes, does it again. I can set, and I've done it a lot of times. She's seen me do it. I can set the high E string with a tape measure and visually change the saddles where they're supposed to be and be right without ever touching anything. I then hook it up to a tuner and it'll be right because visually you can literally get it that close because it's just a mathematic thing based on the string gauge. And the only reason you have problems is if your nut height is wrong on one string, if you have, um, that's probably the biggest thing. The nut height on one string is probably the biggest problem that you'll run into if you have one saddle that's way out of whack with the other ones. <clears throat> super chat from Mr. Goat. Thank you for the super chat. The two of you are perfectly intonated. Much love. He didn't say, and why. He didn't. But you said it, just in case. Why. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. All right, we have two minutes left and four questions. Let's do it. Curtis Chavez, Lighting opinions round. on the wild pickups, particularly micro coils and L500XL. I have no opinion. All right, y'all help Curtis out. Um, Hogman Hawk says eight always comes and goes too fast and I miss the guitar part. LOL. <laughs> um, Biff Tannen, pure nickel versus stainless steel strings. Any preference? Uh, yeah, I'm not a pure nickel guy. I like the brightness of the other stuff. Jose Rene Trevino. I have a three pickup P90 guitar. I'm looking to upgrade the pickup. Should I replace with three new P90s or buy a matching set of two and add a mini humbucker style to the neck, mid, or bridge? Thanks for great resources. Three P90s. If you order all three P90s from me, 
uh, just put a thing on there that says it's going to be a set, and we will wind them reverse wound, reverse polarity, so that it's hum canceling in the notch positions. Dude, that guitar will be amazing. All right, it's nine o'clock. Okay, so here's how this works. We're going to go off topic. You are allowed to answer. You you can ask guitar questions. You can answer the questions. Sure. Basically, here's how it works. You can ask whatever you want, and we might answer it. Uh, we don't. We rarely turn down questions. We usually ask just about anything, but it has to be not guitar related. If you want to ask a guitar related question after nine o'clock, it has to be a super chat. That's the only way we'll answer a guitar related question after nine o'clock. We do this because it's just fun hanging out with you and and just because. Yeah. Um, all right, so I have to go back to Zoltan. Oh, okay. So Zoltan had an off-topic question. Yep. He said, any recommendations for a product to lubricate the clutch, throttle, and speedometer cables of a vintage motorcycle? Yeah, I just use any kind of oil. Um, but I, even like graphite, like uh, what you would use like on a chain on a bicycle... And they have, and I don't know if they have this where you live, because he's in Europe, but they have these um, little attachments that you can put, it's like a little clamp, so you'd like pull your clutch cable, right, and then, you know, you, you like pull your clutch in, and then there's that like spot where the cable is where you can kind of like see it, and this thing that clamps on it and you spray like a, almost like a WD-40 straw and you can spray it and it shoots the lube down the cable tube, the, whatever they call that. And it works really good. Um, Seth used to have one and it was awesome. We used to use it all the time. Uh, but that's what I would, that's what I would get one of those so that you can get the lube to go all the way down the cable. And then I don't know that it matters what, what lube you use. Cool. All right, they're already rolling in. Cool. Um, <clears throat> where did it go? Rusty said, alien invasion in Las Vegas. They have come to steal our heavy equipment. I don't know what that's about. Really? I don't know what that's about. Nope. I don't either. Um, Curtis Chavez says, cookies, ice cream, cake, pie, or pudding. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't eat pudding. No, I don't eat pudding. Uh, pie over cake. Oh, I think I like cake over ice pie. Ice cream over cookies. Cookies so over. I'm cookie and cake, and you're pie and ice cream. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All the things. Yeah. I don't really eat pudding anymore. I will I haven't eat. I had pudding in so long, I don't even know if I yeah. would like it. I will eat. Obviously, I will eat cake, and I will eat cookies. Obviously. But given the choice, I will have ice cream and pie for sure. Yeah. Brownies? Who left out brownies? I love brownies. Mm -hmm. um, Derek Sittler says Hawaiian pizza or no? Yes. Yes. Because that just means pineapple, right? Is that what the controversy is? Canadian bacon, but... Ew. Most people put... Um, most people, it's the pineapple on the pizza thing. Yeah. I don't care. I'll put most anything on pizza. Except meat and cheese. Except meat and cheese. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let's see. <clears throat> Guitar science. Do you still have a class A motorhome? Was it a positive experience? We do not. We have a B van now. Um, but it was a great experience. It was a fantastic experience. We were just talking about that the other day. I was just driving my B. Actually, I was driving my B van last night. Because I try to drive it like once a week or so just to keep it, you know, keep even when we're not traveling. And, uh, man, I think it was, there was a semi-truck that was pushing us around because it was windy and we were coming across the Savannah River last night. And I was thinking, I'm glad I'm in my B-Van now, but, man, I really loved living on the road for two years. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. And we, we are to the point, we were just talking about this the other day, too, where were we this one time when whatever? And you literally, I don't know. We've been to so many places that I cannot remember where we were when we did something. Like, I can't remember. 
because we've just been so many places. You know, what's that restaurant that we went to? Remember, blah, 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 whatever city. And I'm like, man, was that in Colorado? Was that in Utah? Was that in... I can remember some pieces sometimes. Because remember, yeah. the last one I was asking you about, I was like, I don't know what it was. Is some famous person, what's the state before Illinois? Like, I was... Yeah. I, like, could envision it, but I couldn't remember. I still yeah. don't know what it was, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. There's just so many... It was great. And we would still be doing a lot more traveling, but the problem is, is we are too busy like um we are making a lot of pickups and to keep orders down to two or three weeks you know we got to stay on it so traveling is but and we have goals too we have we have things we want to accomplish this year so yeah, so Karen Bassett said, I saw that in the news. Light flash, then 10-foot-high, quote, mm -hmm. beings in someone's backyard. But, of course, no video or photos. Yeah. I'm thoroughly... So we did a video on our other channel about <clears throat> going to the uh, Bigfoot Museum. And somebody in the comments was like, I saw one cross in front of my car, blah, 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 blah. Like, and I literally replied to him sort of irreverently but not pictures or it didn't happen 2023 there's no reason for unrecognizable blurry pictures of stuff you know your yeah. your freaking cell phone could take the picture of the moon like i still don't get like even like uh all the stores like why do you have such crappy cameras if you have like a theft policy like get better that's cameras. true we our cameras on our house. You could pretty much tell who the person was. Unless it could it was dark. It wasn't great. It in wasn't the dark. great in the dark. You could read license plates with it. I mean, it was pretty good. <clears throat> um, Curtis Chavez says brownies count as cake. It just didn't rise. I disagree. No brownies are different. Brownies are um, different. Jeffrey Egan says, "Can vegans eat pudding? Because you can't have pudding until you eat your meat. That must be like an old that's saying that song. Or something. No, it's a song. It's a, yeah from Pink Floyd." Oh, you I can't have any meat. pudding if you don't eat your meat. You've never heard that? I know zero Pink Floyd songs. Good for you. I couldn't even name one if... Good for you. No, zero. Um, that's some childhood trauma, actually, is why. Why? Oh, yeah. No, I don't think no? we've ever talked about it. Um, when I was young, I was friends with a girl. She's a couple years younger than me. Um... But I didn't understand what was happening at the time. But basically, her parents and their friends, like, they would lock the kids out of the house. And I think they were all smoking. But I didn't know at the time. Like, I just thought, like, who locks their kids out of the house? Um, but they were really big Pink Floyd fans. And I didn't like any of them. So I just was, uh, I associate that music with that group of people. And I'm just like, eh. Well, that music is that group of people. Is it? So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, strange story, but I mean, there's more to that, obviously. Yeah, I, like, I never heard but, that. But um, Sean McMillan says, I've got the knife bug. What is your preferred EDC in the 50 to $100 range? Fifty to one hundred dollars. Can you get an Ontario Rat three for f for fifty to one hundred dollars? Um. Can you get? There are some very cool bokers, but they're made in some other country. He didn't specify where it had to be made. I know. I'm just telling you. Oh. I'm just make being transparent. Um, Civivi. Uh, Civivi is an interesting one because they're made in China, but they're made by a very, very high quality company. Um, their stuff is very, very good. So Civivi, I would say. Um, CRKT. You got to watch it with CRKT quality. Um, I don't like spider codes that are under about 120 bucks. Although they've got a Delica four right now 
That Charles one. Wallace says Kershaw. Kershaw, too. Yeah, Kershaw. This is what I would get, actually. This particular one might, this particular model is uh, over a hundred bucks. But I do know that they're making a CPM M4 right now, Blade. This is a, De a Spyderco Delica 4. And they come in all kinds of colors. You don't have to get pink and black. But this knife right here is a really good EDC knife. And you can get these for under a hundred bucks, probably about $80. And this is a very, very good knife. Um, just really easy to fit in the pocket, four-way pocket clip. It comes in all kinds of different blade steels, but the M4 is is really good, and I think you can get those for about 80 bucks right now. Um, and these are these are really good. That's where I would start. You can't go wrong with Spyderco. And I think this is a U.S. made knife. In fact, I'm in fact I'm certain that this is a U.S. made knife. I thought all Spyderco's oh, no. were made. This is Japan. This is a Japanese oh. knife. Um, Haas <clears throat> says, old school hip hop, what is your top three? Ooh, you first. I have no clue. I don't know that I have a top. Um, and I, I don't think I classify as old school hip hop. So I would go all the way back. So I am, I mean, I could go Run DMC, Fat Boys, Sugar Hill Gang. Like I could go all the way back. Yeah. So I could go very quickly to Run DMC. I 100% Run DMC, but I'm friends with those those guys, so that's a different thing. Um, I would also go. I mean, Public Enemy and all that stuff. Uh, so. Uh, an iced tea. Um, mine's all 90s hip hop. Yeah, see, I'm um, before you. I know, but and mine's 90s, yeah. But the stuff that I would actually listen to from back then, back yeah. earlier, I mean, I would obviously listen to all that stuff, but I'm never going to skip an Eminem song. I'm always going to listen to Eminem. Yeah. I'll never skip that. And I'll never skip Snoop, probably. Um, how about you? I don't know. I was just thinking of another story I could share, but I was going to look up a year first because I don't remember. Don't know what year it is? Yeah, because it's, it's another ridiculous story. We've talked about like the first, um, cassette that I owned. Was Appetite for also, Destruction. um. And I'm a oh, huge man. Rage Against the um, Machine fan. So I think I have always been... Um, a hip hop fan. I love electronic music. A lot of people don't realize this about me, but I really, really love electronic music. Like, if I'm in the car by myself, I'm not listening to guitar music. I'm listening to electronic music. My number one favorite record of all time, of all time, is DJ Shadow introducing from 1996. That is my number one of all time. So in 1989, yep. I would have been really young. You know what song came out in 1989? To inappropriately listen to yep. the entire Two, Two Live, Live Crew. Crew. Yep. Yep. When I think 1990, 1989, I think Martika Toy Soldier. Yep, I know that song. That was 1989. Um, anyway, Celine Dion had a song that year, I think. Whitney Houston Such had a song a that year. All right, let me catch up because I'm way behind. I'm a huge mu music history fan. Like, I love all music. That's, I, I love all of it. <laughs> Haas says, I know you're not flexing, but Run DMC is a mean flex. <laughs> I mean, he's been on our podcast. He's been, yeah, they've been on our podcast. Like, yeah, I love those guys. And you need to go listen to that podcast, and here's why. A lot of people give me a hard time about being uh, so wide open in my music tastes, and like, I can't respect you because you listen to, you know, Machine Gun Kelly or whatever. But when you go and you listen to that podcast, and you listen to... Uh, 
boss is cracking me up. What? You didn't say De La Soul unsubbed again. Oh my god. We were just talking about De La Soul last night. We were. Because we were over at her parents' house and he had, her dad had some kind of like vintage one hit wonder hip hop stuff going and we were listening to De La Soul. Um, no, that's Sorry. awesome. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. No, but one of the things that's interesting is before there was hip hop, it was break beats of rock songs. So the boom, boom, pow thing, the boom, boom, tsh, boom, boom, tsh, that whole thing that everybody used, starting with Run DMC, starting with like all that stuff, that was a Billy Squire song, who was a guitar god of that time. And so they used rock break beats. That's what rock box is. Um, all that stuff. So to listen to that history of where it actually came from, and listen to those hip hop guys from the street talk about rock music and turning it into a new style of music is just a, such a cool thing. And now, you know, the reason I got to be friends with those guys is because Big KO, who plays for Run DMC and works with Daryl McDaniels from Run DMC, is um, produces his stuff. He plays Les Paul. He's a Gibson artist, and they use real instruments in all of their music. That's how I got hooked up with them. Um, that, and it is his fault. The reason why we have mini humbucker pickups now on our website is because of him. Because he bugged me and bugged me and bugged me and was like. Look, man, the Gibson Custom Shop just gave me this this Firebird, and we need to do something with these pickups. And he is the reason. Run, just so everybody knows, Run DMC is the reason we have Firebird pickups on our website right now. So, you're welcome. You're welcome. With um, my hip hop, with my hip hop background. <laughs> let's see. <clears throat> Shark Air says, "Have you ever watched a Ron Ellis video?" Yes. Oh, I don't know who that is. Marsha Murray says a Class B Sprinter is what I want. I know someone's selling one, Marsha Murray. Yeah, we're selling... Ours is a, a Ram Pro Master, but um, it is also like 50 grand cheaper. If you're interested in buying one, I have one. It is really nice, and it is for sale. Curtis Chavez says, have you ever accidentally claimed a piece of flesh while fidgeting? Um, <laughs> I've cut myself once or twice. Um, I'm a lot better at it these Doc days. Stilton and thoughts on the Ferrari victory at Le Mans? I think it's neat. I think it's neat. I didn't get to follow it. We were um, on the road. We went to see Kenny Wayne Shepherd in um, Savannah, oh, yeah, we Georgia. Didn't talk about that. So we um, we didn't get to. I didn't get to watch it because we were on on the road. Um, but it's really cool. I think it's really neat that they won something. <laughs> um, that's all they're gonna Rusty be. said he was talking about the aliens he said there's a video on YouTube now really I'll have to check it out um, Rusty said brownies are denser than cake yes yes and crispier on the outside edges uh, especially if you have a brownie pan where they're always crispy all the way around yes we have a special brownie pan we don't right now but we will get it back oh your mom has it yes mm -hmm. maybe Brianna had it Maybe Brianna had it. Yeah, I don't know. Which means it's probably gone. Maybe. I don't oh, well. know. Somebody sells Pampered Chef and I'll get another one. Yep. Um, Watch, now you're going to get some DMs. Right. Somebody's wife out there right now sells Pampered Chef. Yes. Hey, would you like to join? Nope. <laughs> um, Been there, done that. Timothy Potter says most of us Pink Floyd fans smell like mothballs. What does that even mean? Because... He is taking, except I was pretty hardcore on uh, classic rock fans dying on my last podcast. What does mothballs have to do with it? Because I talked about how we went to the concert and it smelled like mothballs in there. There was that many old people. It didn't actually smell like mothballs, but there was so many old people. At the Kenny Wayne Shepherd show? Yes. And we were talking about the fact that, or I was talking about the fact that, I hope that more young people take 
interest in guitar. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have a conversation with Allie because she's 24. And the problem is, is that she attracts creepy old men. No joke. I saw some comments on your posts. I know. I was pissed about that, actually. I wasn't pissed, but I was like, uh, well, we we're missing the point. I'm just saying that it was, it was not, it, we, you didn't need to go there. Right. You didn't need to go there. She's a freaking amazing guitar player. And if that's what you're commenting about and that's the way you're taking it, I, I don't have time for that. But, but what I'm saying is I hope that more young people um, listen to her because we're going to have to start going to younger shows because I'm allergic to mothball smell. Um, Robert Buffalo says, what do you think about AI using a famous singer doing a simulated voice on a track for a song you've written? I think, uh, that that is above my pay grade at the moment. You mentioned yesterday, while we were talking about something, that there are starting to be some meetings in EU and mm -hmm. Leslie's in software that's her job, so she knows a lot more about what's going on in computer land. But they're starting to look at regulating AI more. Mm -hmm. um, I was just listening to something about um, screen. the Screenwriters Guild is on strike right now. And one of the, of course, they're always dealing with, you know, unionized uh, salaries and et cetera. But one of the things they're worried about is AI because of the way they get paid. And basically the way it works is the way I understood it. I could be wrong, but the way I understood it is if you write a screenplay, that's the bulk of the money for writing a screenplay. Then every revision after that is, you know, you get paid a little bit, but you don't get as much as if you wrote the thing. So now they're saying, well, if AI can write a screenplay and it's kind of crappy, then that takes all that revenue off the table and all these people get is all these revision, you know, money. So I think that the creative side of everything is going to be affected. I do believe that. And I think there's going to be a problem until they figure it out. One of the things I think about, though, and I brought this up the other day in my podcast, and I haven't gotten a chance to talk to you about it, is if there is AI stuff, we obviously we know that. But it's just like anything else. Like if you watch uh, John Wick, okay, and you know that all of the blood and all of the special effects, there's a lot of CGI in it, right? And we know that it's unrealistic. There are people that, first of all, you're okay with that. Like you know that John Wick is this unrealistic thing but then there are going to be people that want to see an old school with people uh Django Quentin Tarantino movie where everything is real where all of the scenes and the stuntmen and all of the stuff is there's no CG and it's all real I'm using that as an example where when we get into AI land, people are going to want to say, okay, I know that's an AI song, but I'm going to go out this weekend and I want to hear real music made by a real human being. But are you going to know if it's AI? I think that's, that's gonna, the problem. That's going to be the responsibility of like me. Like Matt always says, you buy pickups from Dylan and you know that he still makes them. Because we sit there at a machine and we do it. Like, I do it. Um, and that's going to be the responsibility of me to continue to make sure that people appreciate the fact that I'm actually making this stuff by hand and it's not on a machine. And we don't have a big factory worth of people doing it. And I hope that people continue. There will always be an audience of people that care about real stuff. And so I'm going to have to be good at telling people that there's a machine over there and we actually do this and it's not made by a computer. Yeah, but somebody could throw AI out there and start a YouTube channel and have all the content and get 
You know what I mean? Like, I think there's... Yes, I do know what you mean. I mean, we have a problem right now. We're, we're actually going to have to write a new policy um, because we have AI comments coming in now. Oh. And you can tell because it's typically poorly written mm-hmm. and AI writing repeats itself. Yeah. Um, you, you know, just some phrases, um, but we're pretty sure it's AI. And we're going to have to come up with a policy for that because... You're not supposed to have not people in a community. <laughs> right. Well, we have it in our YouTube comment problem. We have, you know, we have bots in the YouTube comments all the time. Yeah, but bots is different than AI. Well, that's true. But I think it's AI fueling it. I am having a serious problem. I don't know if you guys have had this, but like Twitter right now is like bot paradise central. Like you mm. can't. I mean, I am constantly, I, we have not talked about this, but the amount of, um, the amount of like hot women that want to watch Netflix with me Mm. is very high. You're missing out. I mean. You like to watch movies. I do, but I think they're not real. Mm. I mean, I'm block, like scroll, block, scroll, block. Scroll block all day long. Like, if I spend, not all day long, because I don't spend that much time on Twitter, but as I'm going through Twitter, literally I'm scrolling, 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 block, scrolling, 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 block, scrolling, like that often. It's just, it's just everywhere right now. You're missing out. That could be real. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh. Let's see. But if I pull it up right now, Jeremy right. Kendall said, "I saw Run DMC in Athens, Georgia, at the Forty Watt Club in '96 ish. It was pretty great." And somebody else said, "Jingai Jigo Kumoto Forty Watt Club has great sound. I saw the Melvins there in 2003." Oh, that's cool. The Melvins. Doug Santaniello said they're getting hammered with rain. Um, Sean McMillan said, did Beastie Boys annoy all of you with the sampling on License to Ill? No. I love that song. And I love the Beastie Boys. Let's see. I feel very differently about sampling than a lot of traditional guitar players do, though, so. Because somebody still had to play that stuff. Doc Silton in. Really glad to hear that the junior is coming out more. Stickers on guitars and cars, yes or no? Not cars, yes, guitars. Even though he's never, I've never seen him do it before. I'm about to. I know, but it's new to me. But yeah. definitely not stickers on cars. No, no stick. Well, on glass. On glass if it's professional. Because we would have, we had decals before. We had decals before. We had, um... I would wrap my car, though. That's just a big old sticker. <laughs> yeah, we would wrap the car for sure. I We had, um, like on the Jeep, we had the... It was a line. But you had to know what it was. I'm into, like... I'm not into, like, cover, gra- the, whole cover the whole window yeah. with stickers. Like, we were just talking about that last night. Yeah, like, and we never did. So, like, there's a very uh, RV gimmicky thing where they, like have a map and have these stickers with mm-hmm. all the states and where they went and it it was like decal on the side of their motorhome and no, we never did any that. of that stuff i don't have i mean i know people that buy stickers everywhere they go i never did that we we didn't do any of that no i'm not like a keepsake kind of person yeah we don't keep i probably stuff. should be but i'm not we do have a pretty good shot glass collection from all over the world no we we dwindled it down a lot I feel like we only kept, like, the hard rock ones. Maybe. I didn't even know we still had it. That was a surprise to me. (laughs) When we cleaned out our storage, I I didn't know we had it either. We have some shot glasses. (laughs) Yep. Um, We just don't measure. (laughs) (laughs) We never missed them. No. Um, Let's see. And when we did do shots, we drank them out of espresso cups. That's true. (laughs) That is true. Which is way more than a shot. Yes. Anyway. Um... Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I am um, way behind. 
Mario Navarre it says, I hate cars that are matte black. Not me. Mm-hmm. Seems like everyone has a matte black car nowadays. It looks so bad. I love it. I like it. I like it too. Um, I used to Windsurf have a Maui. Guitar. Those I want to talk to you. Services. Those I want to talk to you. Services are like the old people from the Kenny Wayne Shepherd concert making some extra money under the table. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't either. Hogman Hawk says nothing better than advertising your firearms on your back window. Hey, break into my truck. I'm not, I haven't seen people do that in a long time. I've not mm-hmm. seen it. Well, trucks don't have clear back glass anymore. Either, yeah. So maybe yeah. they have. At least just can't see so them. where we live, if your car doesn't have window tint, yeah, you're either like a real nerd. And it's or, 5% on the back, period. You ain't seeing in the back window. No, you're not seeing in the back window. 5%. No, and probably 20% everywhere else, even though it's... Legal. Allegedly. Allegedly, everyone has 20% on everything. Ours is 35, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, Karen Bassett said, I just got a stealth EVH guitar. I dig the matte finishes. Oh, I just said a guitar comment. My bad. I love, I love matte stuff. I think it's really neat. Ha says, Dylan, you would love the channel Diggin' the Greats. I'll have to check that out. Like G-R-E-A-T-S. Not like, I don't know what else it would be, but just thought I would clarify, apparently. Ha says, sampling is an art. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like, if you listen to, um, I mentioned the... uh, the DJ Shadow record introducing, we've gone to see him live and he actually will play the drums and the keyboards and all of the stuff. Who? DJ Shadow. Okay. And he will actually play all the stuff and then loop it, sample it, and build the song in front of you. So it's not, you know, people talk about 20, you know, 50,000 people listening to a laptop. It's not, that's not what it is. And I would definitely challenge anybody who thinks that's easy to try it. Because I have. I love... I mean, if I pulled up TikTok right now, it would be... Mm, dancing. Mm-hmm. And DJs. Weird facts about Mormons. No, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> I, I finished that series, so I don't see it anymore. I'm trying to think. Yeah, it would probably be DJs and dancing to hip hop music, of course. Um, that's the main thing that yeah. I look out on there, unless somebody sends me something. I think these days, the whole guitar tone thing and like being a guitar nerd and all that stuff, I am trying to more focus on enjoying the end result than worrying about how to get there, if that makes sense. Oh, Hogman Hawks is talking about stickers of firearms. We live, I don't know where you live, Hogman Hawks. We live in the South. It's not a designator or mean anything in the South. No. Everybody's got gun something. Yeah. Not everybody. That's a general Most statement but there's people. a lot of gun stickers for various reasons i mean yeah. we even have like um ar families instead of like peep stick oh people. yeah like, yeah instead of stick people it's like big ar yeah, little yeah, ar yeah. tiny ar tiny ar tiny ar yeah yeah that's true <clears throat> karen bassett said i think the driver window on a car can't be tinted not true not true we can tint windshields here. Allegedly. No, you can't. <laughs> I mean, you can. <laughs> but not legally. Haas says turntables need a setup just like a guitar. They do. 
they do. I used to have, uh, I used to use Serato. I used to use, um, I had a Newmark NS7 with all the stuff. Like, I mean, I love it, man. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I used to watch, I, I still do when I get to catch it, but I kind of forget. Um, but I used to really be pretty faithful about every year they had like, uh, like the DJ contest, like scratch contest and all that. I used to watch all that stuff. I love it. Love it. Um, yeah, everybody's talking about 10. Margie Murray says front windows usually have to be lighter. Yeah, technically they should be 35%. Mm -hmm. And it's only, it doesn't have to be lighter, but it's typically they can get away I mean, doesn't factory glass in the back of cars, is it 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so f the factory glass is 20, so you have to put... So it does look like it's lighter. It doesn't have... I mean, it, that, like, that's not the rule, right? Like, it could be 35 all the way around if you tinted it yourself, but to be legal, but anyway. Yeah, I think... Oh, my. Rusty Fender says you can tint your windshield if you have a skin condition. Who do you tell that to? Yeah, you have to have a prescription for blah, 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 blah. Yeah. We have, um, I need to get the Audi done. I haven't done it. On the van, we have 5% um, ceramic on the windshield because it keeps... Not 5%. It's 70... Maybe it's 80% or 90%. Yeah. It, the it's higher, the opposite. Yeah, yeah. It's the opposite. Where it's not based, it's basically not tinted, but it um, it's ceramic and it keeps the heat of the sun out. And in the motorhome, that is phenomenally cool. I used to have it on my big trucks too, like when I had, I used to have Toyota Tundras. And since the whole thing was this huge greenhouse and like the huge windshield, it was amazing. I want to get it done on the Audi. I, when I got my windows tinted on the Audi, I, I didn't do it and I, I need to do it. Super chat from GM. Thank you for Thank the you, super GM. chat. Said, good evening. Drink on me. Glad I could catch you all. I am always working, so it's difficult. Love your vibes, and thanks for all the teachings. Thanks, man. And thank you for the super chat, and I appreciate that, and I will make sure that I have a drink. This is just water. But... Alan Field says, is this a car channel? I wish it was. Not, I wish it was. I mean, I, I think they might not know what we're doing here. You should. Oh, no, this is a guitar channel. But we just do this little off-topic thing. Um, you know, after 9 o'clock on Thursdays, we just chat about whatever comes up and whatever comes up in the comments, what people ask about. I do it as a way of kind of getting to know y'all because, um, you know, our channel's not so big that we can't, make friends with everybody in fact we've made friends with many of the folks in the comments so um it's funny like people will say like like or people will challenge me in the comments sometimes or they'll troll me somehow and i'll be like no man like if you're in town or if i'm in your town because we travel a lot i'll go out for a beer with you you'll see i'm not like you know We'll talk about whatever. Even if even if you don't agree with me, we'll just have an enjoyable time. And that's kind of what this is. Just kind of just hanging out. But this is a guitar channel. We talk about guitar stuff. Except for right now. <clears throat> Unless you want to send a super chat. Unless you want to send a super chat and ask a guitar question. Um, Mario says, if done properly by a professional, the matte finish does look good. But I feel like 90% of the matte black cars out there were done... With Dollar General spray paint. I feel like all the ones we see are wraps. So they look yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So if you use like, um, yeah, if you use that spray, what's it called? Uh, Plasti dip or whatever, it looks terrible. Um, the reason, because I, I was thinking about wrapping the Audi, but the reason we have not is because I don't trust anybody around here. And I also don't want to spend the money. It costs like $4,000 to wrap a car properly where it really looks good like what you're talking about. And I just haven't found a person around here that would do it. I don't want to spend the money, I don't think. I don't keep my stuff long enough to make anything worth that. 
Ready for this? Mario says, can you legally buy a Barrett M82A2 50 cal in the States? That's my favorite rifle. I used to kill boas back home in Nicaragua with one of them. The snakes <clears throat> never saw it coming. I killed hundreds. That is wow. terrifying. But yes, we could. Yeah, we could buy that. That is... Oof. Yep. Mm -mm. I was actually looking at 50 caliber handguns the other day, but I'm like, I don't understand why you would even own one of these things because you can't really shoot. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you can't really shoot it. And it's like... Two dollars and eighty cents a round. Oof. <laughs> um, Karen Bassett said, "How long does a wrap last?" I don't know, cause I've never had one. I know they last a couple of years if you take care of them right, but I don't know. The other thing too is right now we live in an apartment, so I can't like care for my car the way I really want to, and so um, I have not invested in any of those sorts of things because I can't you know you're supposed to wash them a certain way and whatever and I can't do any of that stuff so if I had my own driveway and my own hose and that kind of thing I would but you want your own hose they're on Twitter I know you keep blocking them Every so you day. have to wait till you have a driveway before you can have hose is that what you said yeah okay yes in different area codes and then you're gonna unblock them or, or are you just gonna take the new ones uh, oh, there'll be, there's a steady supply. Oh, right. Yeah, there's a steady supply. All right. I got a steady supply of Twitter hoes. All right. I don't see any questions. That's about uh, it. What about a vinyl wrap on a guitar, Patrick Hardy? We have done that. Yes. We have done that. We did a charity build about... Probably eight years ago, five five or eight years ago now, um, for a school. And it had a big Indian chief head with like a headdress on it. And we made it fit a Telecaster a certain way. And it was really, it came out really cool. Um, it came out really cool. And what was the shiny one we did? Like a, the experiment one from like the Super Bowl or something. Oh, that's right. So remember when the Super Bowl, they had the PRS Silver Sky? That was chrome. Um, my son was working for a tent shop at the time, and so I bought a bunch of foil. In fact, we still have a bunch. Um, and we wrapped a PRS Silver Sky in mirror finish, just like the one at the Super Bowl. And we did a video about it. Karen Bassett said, what are your thoughts on electric guitars? Have you driven one? What? What are your thoughts on electric cars? Oh, I said guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized what I said. I was like, wait, what's the problem? Electric cars, have you driven one? I have. They're incredible. And um, we actually owned a really good hybrid for a while. And I, I'm, not, um, I'm not ready. I'm still enjoying i think i will always have some sort of internal combustion as long as i can have some sort of internal combustion performance based vehicle because i'm such a gearhead um because i really enjoy it it will be forced induction we have you know a turbo car now we have a an s line audi so um i really 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 like that stuff i would love to have an electric car i don't again we don't live in a situation where we could support one I also am skeptical of the actual green benefit of them right now because of where all the batteries come from and all that kind of stuff. So uh, not that I get super idealistic about the environment because, you know, you have to live. But I just don't think this stuff's quite there yet. I'm, I'm, I would love it if it was. But I don't think it's quite there yet. And so we've not made that leap. Because they're not cheap. Um, they're not cheap for what you get. So I wouldn't want a Tesla. I think they're too stripped down and too rudimentary. Um, I don't know. 
Marsha Murray said, would you drive a windowless car with cameras and screens? No. Um, Not yet. Not ever, probably. The whole self-driving thing and all that, I don't... The panda says, do you like the new gray opaque flat car colors like the sand looking one or the light blue gray a la Honda Accord? So we used to have a cement gray... In fact, I ordered it on purpose. Mm -hmm. I had a cement gray um, Toyota Tundra. We had one before they were everywhere. Yep. I still like that though. I mean, on too. almost every vehicle I see it on, it looks. It, yeah. It looks good on most vehicles. Agreed. Yep. Pretty strange. Yep, I like that flat, I, and I that's something I would do in matte to make it look like primer. I would love that. Do Alan I, Field said, "My brother's 1999 El Diablo brake job cost over ten thousand Canadian dollars." Woo! That's wild. My Audi, the front brakes for it are like thousand dollars for the rotors and like five or eight hundred bucks for the pads. They're not cheap. He don't drive like he cares though. I mean, that's what it's for. <laughs> you don't drive an Audi S car just because it's slow. Yeah, Timothy ain't. Potter says, good that you are an into electric cars. Think about where the dead batteries are going to go and what will happen to the power grid when they are all plugged in every night. Yeah, you know, I'm not real, like, binary on that, like, um, on anything. I think everything's in a constant state of progress, right? So I'm not, like, against electric cars, yeah. but I'm also not for them yet. I think as things change and as that grows in that direction things will change and it will get to a point where i'll yeah i want one but right now i agree with you like will i agree with that sentiment in five years i don't know we just have to see where where technology goes but right now that's kind of where i'm at like i don't like the wastefulness of batteries in general i mean everything we have has rechargeable batteries in it um and as convenient as it is we say convenient. I mean, how many chargers of stuff? My flashlights have chargers. My watch has a charger. My phone has a charger. My computer has a charger. Like, my earbuds have a charger. My headphones have a charger. Like, everything has chargers. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a while before we actually standardize all that stuff and make it really, really worth it. Do you know this person? Nope. <laughs> I just thought it was really odd. And... Travis McCartney says, do y'all like escape rooms? Me and my old college buddies have been meeting up in different cities and hitting escape rooms as part of the entertainment. It's a nice change from drink the beer. You will have never, you will never do that. Mm -mm, never. Me either. That's not zero a... interest. Uh, zero. Yeah, me either. You can tell me how fun they are. I do not care. Me either. That is like next level. Anxiety. <laughs> anxiety out of my control. Like not cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a desire for it either. It doesn't seem nothing about that sounds fun to me. <laughs> I don't get my enjoyment from that kind of stuff though. Like, even if. I did take up something that was had some fear involved. I mean, I did. I, I rode motorcycles for a living. Um, and there was always some fear involved with that. But it was always developing a skill. Like, I don't care about just, like, fear for I mean, no like reason. It's brain activity, right? Like Yeah. No, I mean, the escape rooms. Like, oh, that's I... A, that's a brain... Yeah. <coughs> Not in... I don't know. I don't I, have brain room to spare. I'm tired. Yeah. I don't want to go, like, do something like that ever. Anyway. Yeah. I, yeah, I have no... That's just personal. I, I think it's cool. I, I think... I mean, 
I, I mean, know it, lots of people that like them. If you do it, tell us our tell us your story about it. Yeah, because I think it's cool. It's it interesting. Is not for me. So when you say, "Do you like escape rooms?" the answer is no, and the answer is no because I've never tried it, but I probably will never try it. And learning about a person who's super into it is a thing, because the psychology that it takes to be good at them or do them oh, yeah? is is also very interesting to to learn about the people. Doc Silson has said he drove his RS5 to Traverse City last weekend, found a 2020 SQ7 on the Audi lot, went back the next day, and it was gone. Dang. Rockbox says, I got a 23 Durango Hellcat. Ooh. I get the forced induction internal combustion engine, sound, power, and the feel all together. Yeah. Yep, that's what I like, too. On a nice cool morning, you go out there, you're up to operating temperature, and you just go like this, and you hear air whooshing, and you feel, whooshing. and you feel hardcore uh, forward propulsion, and it is a thing. Rusty Fender says, what do you think of the Vision Pro, Apple's new AR headset? Could be cool to play guitar with one of those, and it helps you progress on your mistakes. Yeah, I don't want to spend $3,500 for it, but I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. I thought it was, like, almost cool. Like, yeah, it would be a huge investment for people. But when I realized how custom it was, and so you can't really share it, that seems exceptionally unreasonable. Yeah. I. It's a, it's a Gen 1 for them, right? So Either I, way. You know. I just thought that was wild. Travis McCartney says him and his friends are all engineers, so the problem-solving aspect of escape oh. rooms is hardwired. So that part makes a yeah. lot of sense. It does. That's that's just cool. not the way I would want to apply it. But and I that's... guess if you have a group of people that are all into it, I mean, if I had a, if I had a group of friends, if we had friends, anyway, um, <laughs> I would, I would go. If the group I was with could reliably handle whatever we were going to go do. Oh, okay. I wouldn't want any responsibility. And I would also need an out. Oh, yeah. See, so it's interesting that he says that. Because I'm engineer brain too, right? But my engineer brain goes to skill building by figuring out a thing. But that's what they're doing. I know. But I don't. I I get that. But you can't do anything with it. But Is that I what you're can't. Saying? Right. So he's going to escape. So he's going to you escape. Could be room. learning something. Maybe. He's going to an escape room. I'm going to the range. Where I'm like learning the physics of a thing. Doing math in my head the whole time. Learning about all these forces and trying to harness this power and make it to do a thing that I wanted to do like that's that's why I love it so it's the same thing it's just in a different application of the thing T-Bone says I'm zero for two tonight and questions answered uh oh I don't think I've seen your question T-Bone and if it's a guitar question you're not I saw get... your statement that said my brother sold Audi says they're superior to BMW that's, oh amen to that that's not a question I would not buy a BMW right now. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I don't remember that name. Oh, no. You asked a guitar question. I did skip you on purpose. It's after nine. Yep. Maybe he doesn't know how it works. So We don't answer guitar questions after nine unless they're uh, super chats. Because this is yeah. off topic hour. So that might be why I missed you, T-Bone. But thanks for hanging out with us. Guitar Science said you need a MacGyver room instead of an escape room. <laughs> <laughs> like problem solving. Problem solving room. I don't know what you do with the toilet paper roll, so I don't know. 
Like, I feel like that's a MacGyver kind of thing, right? Like, you would have, like, a pile of crap, and you'd have to figure something out, like... Oh, like... Oh. I wouldn't be good at that, either. Oh, yeah, I would. <laughs> that would be fun, actually. Yep. Uh, yeah, if you were given a toilet paper roll, a paper clip, a roll of duct tape, and a, like, Swiss Army knife, and a Coke bottle cap, and you had to, like, figure out how to get out of something or whatever. That would make sense to me. Yep. Cool. Well, awesome, you guys. This has been super fun. We will do it again. Oh, we almost did a whole extra hour. Yeah, I know. I was just noticing that it was almost 10 o'clock. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us tonight, and I appreciate everybody, and uh, I really enjoy doing these things every week, and I'm sure we'll do it again. You're going to see probably two videos tomorrow, because I actually worked on the one video uh, already. i got to finish it up in the morning. And get it edited, and you'll see that at 4 p.m. I would imagine, it depends when FedEx gets here tomorrow, but when I get, I have a guitar coming tomorrow, and we will do a live unboxing, as we normally do. So we will do that and play it live for the first time that we see it, and etc. So you'll probably see a couple videos tomorrow. Cool. So thanks for hanging out. We will see you all tomorrow.